the richest place on earth is not the gold mines in Congo or South Africa or some part of Africa. It's not the oil mines in Nigeria and the Middle East. He said the wealthiest place on earth, he called it the symmetry. Why? Because books are lying there that were never written. Businesses covered with sand that never came to the light of day. Speeches that could alter the thinkings of generations. Like I have a dream. Imagine if he never said that. Welcome to Start Now Channel. We are glad you tuned in today to experience another life-changing encounter in God's presence. The Bible says in Psalm 119 verse 130, The entrance of thy word giveth life. As you listen and watch, may you experience the transformative power of God's life. If all that we have only ends here, you do not have much. Thank God for certificates. Press for them. Thank God for secular achievements and achievements of any sort. Press for them. Build the business. Expand the ministry. But in all you're doing, have it at the back of your mind. Nobody has gone out of the earth with one dollar, one naira, one pound. It doesn't work that way. If you cannot carry your physical body out, talk less whatever, you know, is physical there. People die. Usually people try to inform me either to pray for them, attempting to raise them back, or just to help manage the grief and all of that. You've heard me say these things again and again. Let me tell you the truth. If you've stood before many dead bodies, there is a sermon only a dead body can preach. That body has to be dead to preach that sermon. And I have listened to the sermons that have come from many dead bodies. Great bodies, but now dead bodies educated bodies but now dead bodies warrior bodies excellent in stature sickly bodies healthy bodies that died and all of them lie before life the end of the achievement of all men is provided you are breathing if you are not breathing the story is over as far as this realm is concerned the only thing you can transport out of this realm is one singular relationship backed up by your years of investment to the kingdom these are the only things that sustain the power to have value beyond life the richest place on earth is not the gold mines in Congo or South Africa or some part of Africa it's not the oil mines in Nigeria and the Middle East he said the wealthiest place on earth, he called it the symmetry. Why? Because books are lying there that were never written. Businesses covered with sand that never came to the light of day. Speeches that could alter the thinkings of generations. Like I have a dream. Imagine if he never said that. The press for justice and equality captured in an intelligent person's presentation has rewritten the liberation narrative of many many territories today what if these people never emerged but my question is now that they are gone what becomes of them i hope you know that every secular celebration ends on earth the parameter for celebrating people in heaven and the life beyond works by a separate set of rules you would think that if you were a billionaire or you were a CEO or you were some man of God, by the time you stand before God, they would arrange you based on that rating. Chances are excellent that if I come into an occasion, perhaps for the purpose of honor, you would say, Apostle Joshua Selman, please, your seat is in front. It doesn't happen that way after this life is done. You will join a very ruthless queue where everybody stands and the works of men will be tried among the many things that i'm grateful to god for for the mentorship of men like dr miles monroe extending to that of people like billy graham is the consciousness of eternity that if only in this life oh this koinonia you see we're not carrying it to heaven it is a platform to help us serve the purposes of the kingdom once we are alive and within the time that is allotted 
in this place right now there are weak old babies in this place right now are children under 10 in this place right now are teenagers listening to me in this place right now are young adults stepping into their early 20s in this place right now are adults maximizing their life in this place right now are people who have crossed the 50 year mark in this place right now are people who are rounding up their lives death is a strange equalizer it can bring the entire achievements of a man to naught in one moment it's important for you to have it at the back of your mind that anything without jesus only ends here the continuation of your relevance is directly connected to your being with jesus and you're receiving his life i have seen people die i know they were not saved it was a painful feeling because based on the authority of scripture the destiny of all sinners and all believers unbelievers is defined as painful as that may be maybe some of them were your loved ones today right now it's an uncomfortable truth but if we are to judge by the integrity of scripture we know where they are and it is not a good place some of them left this morning some of them left last week some of them entered the new year we laughed together but they are gone today some of them laughed when we preached they mocked when we cried calling the name of jesus they mocked to scorn as we roll before the king of kings and for them destiny has folded someone came to church tonight and in the midst of all you have heard me teach you shouted amen for promotion you shouted amen for increase you shouted amen for prophetic relocation i hope you will shout amen when i mention jesus i hope you will shout amen when i mention the wisest question that all men must ask and answer now listen you can delay in answering every other question i ask life will forgive you but there is one question that when you delay the consequence is eternal there are people who would discover and answer the question who am i when they are 40 or 50. it's not the best but at least it's better than nothing there are others who will answer the question where am i coming from late in life there are others who will answer the question why am i here late in life there are others who will answer the question what do i have late in life life will forgive you even abraham he started a major part of his journey from 75 life forgave him but can i tell you the truth there is one question that if even if you answer and you do not answer properly both life and eternity will not forgive you that is the question where are you going from here Dr. Miles taught us that in all our achievements, we should not be carried away by mundane things. We will build the houses. We will feed the poor. We will extend the influence to the farthest points as God grants grace. But in all that doing, we will not forget to remind ourselves and remind all those who are within our care. The Bible says in Acts chapter 20 and verse 28, it says, take heed to yourself first and then to the flock over which the Holy Ghost had made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. Take heed to yourself. I've preached it many times here. I won't die young by the grace of God, but I will never fear death. Never. It is unnecessary to fear death when Jesus is in your heart. It is unnecessary to fear death when you have found your place in life and you are spending your life serving him for me like paul i will emphasize again as i've done to live is christ and to die is gain you don't run away from profit the reason why we contend for longevity is not the fear of death it is to allow us ample time to serve the purposes of the kingdom within the script allotted for us listen to me if christ tarries a day will come nobody looking at me here will be in the earth it will be another set of people the same way there were other sets of people before our arrival the wisdom here is that in all your getting degrees 
in all your pressing to be an exceptional person in all your passion to do ministry and excel in ministry in all your passion to want to get financial resources as important as they are in all your desire to maximize destiny as we title this talk you came to church because for some of you you've answered all four remain in the fifth you have a healthy perception of yourself congratulations you know where you come from because you've hung around church you understand instinctively and by training why you are here you have a vast understanding of your potentials you've attended all kinds of leadership seminars and they have trained you into piecing together your value you can articulate them with uncanny mastery but the one question the lord is asking you tonight and this wraps up my contemplation with us today and also in honor to the late dr miles monroe where are you going i'm not sure when dr miles monroe said that he knew that he would soon be gone i'm not sure i never heard him say that he was going to go early even though i heard him say very confidently that even if he left early it didn't matter little did he know he was prophesying and truly he left all of us will not go the same day our times are in the hands of god there are those who started this year you know some of them today they've joined the cloud of witnesses and some painfully are in hell my final call to you is that the greatest secret of your confidence in life should not be the cars that are parked in your garage not the amounts that are stashed in your account not the certificates that you have not the jewelries that are stashed in your box not the clothes that fill your room not the awards that decorate your office not the paraphernalia that life has brought around you the greatest basis of your confidence should be that in all of this if all I have is Jesus, I've got something more than gold. I will tell it to the world, Jesus is more than gold. I don't know how true it is, but I was told that one great giant of faith years ago when he left, they went to search his accounts and search other things, hoping that there would be so much money there. And I don't know, they didn't find as much as would be expected and according to the story the people were surprised this man was so wealthy we knew him to be wealthy while he served what suddenly happened that he's long gone he was told that the man would put a big table to eat and invite everybody and say come and dine and eat honestly let me tell you don't wait till you are old before you understand the vanity of life without Christ no certificate will replace your refusal of jesus when life is done no amount of white travel across the globe you may be vast in learning vast in travels it will not replace your not knowing jesus before we bow our heads to pray i just felt to do this right now and then we'll pray on this lord's day the greatest way to maximize destiny and I want you to write it is to do destiny with Jesus in your heart it is better to not have money and have Jesus it's not the best but at least it is better than the worst you may never have the privilege of travel around the world perhaps not have the privilege to be celebrated by your world and your generation but if you make this simple decision of making Jesus Lord of your life and you mean it truthfully then you have made the wisest decision no other decision stands close to this i want to extend an invitation to someone right now while we're all seated you would do your destiny a great disservice to hear these kinds of teaching and answer amen with joy to all the four questions excitedly so and then for this one final one which perhaps may be the only question you are yet to answer You've answered the remaining four. It's time to answer the final one. You are saying, Apostle, 
this is the moment of destiny for me i do not know how many days i have left all i know is that i want to live my life loving jesus serving jesus living for him spending my life for him you are in this place and you are saying i have never consciously made a decision for jesus i've been to crusades where men of god preached i've read books on salvation perhaps you may be saying i have watched on tv salvation messages but i've never really taken a conscious step to sort my eternal destiny and my eternal stand tomorrow may be late it is true jesus has given you an opportunity right now and you are saying apostle i know that the times are evil i want to redeem the time i want to stop wasting my life living anyhow you are in this place you are rededicating your life to jesus or making a first call wherever you are don't be ashamed and don't be afraid oh glorious one we praise your name we lay our crown are you coming if you're coming please come quickly You're joining us from across the globe i want you to follow in this prayer it's never too late to make it right with jesus thank you brothers and sisters for this noble decision many made this decision and today they are eternally grateful for it many despise the call for this decision and unfortunately there may not be a chance again based on what the bible says for you you have hearkened to this call the Bible says, as many who will come to him, he will in no wise despise. I salute your courage. Please lift your right hand. And I want you to say this after me as loud and as clear as you can. Say, Lord Jesus. Say one more time, Lord Jesus. Tonight, I have heard your word. I declare that I love you with all my heart. I declare that you are the son of God. I believe that you died for my sin. I believe that you rose again for my justification. Right now, I receive Jesus into my heart as my Savior, my Lord, and my King. I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life from tonight i am a child of god i go forward ever and backward never amen keep your hands lifted lord we thank you eternally grateful for the privilege to extend your life your love your message to these precious ones and the many who have made this call across the globe your word declares that as many who will come to you you will in no wise cast away we thank you for receiving these ones and imparting upon them the life of God. I pray by the authority of scripture that the grace to live victorious Christian lives is imparted upon them right now. That they will love you like never before. They will serve you like never before. I pray for you all that you will go from glory to glory and grace to grace. And that when this life is over, together we will rejoice in the presence of our King and Savior. In the mighty and matchless name of Jesus. Amen and Amen. Were blessed by the message you just watched let us know what stood out to you in the comment section you can also support our channel by liking and sharing our videos so more people like you will be able to watch these powerful messages we celebrate you and see you in our next video thank you